Our next uh, presenter, uh, welcoming back Dr. Sorry, I'll give you a, Dr. Mark Gilbert. Uh, most of the people who've been here before know Dr. Gilbert. He's uh, worked here uh, before, uh, and he's a community med medicine specialist and the director of Applied Ep Epidemiology Unit at the Ontario HIV Treatment Network, just over a year now, I guess, on that, where he leads the Ontario HIV Epidemiology and Surveillance Initiative, which aims to understand, monitor, and translate HIV trends in Ontario. Mark also holds the position of physician epidemiologist at the BC Centre for Disease Control, where he leads the BC Online. Great. Thanks, Neil. Oh, I shouldn't have touched yeah. that, and I did. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. Let's just leave it, leave it at that. Um, so it's, uh, it's nice to be back and, and happy to share with you a bit of some of the preliminary findings of, of how things have been going with Get Checked Online, which has sort of been up really fully in operation for about uh, 10, 11 months now, and if we think of the full launch, which we'll talk about. Um, but I sort of wanted to just take, approach this from the angle of, of how Get Checked Online is related to stigma in healthcare. So we know that um, stigma and discrimination related to sexual orientation is a very significant problem within the healthcare system. Um, we know that it creates barriers to appropriate healthcare for gay, bisexual, and other minority sexual with men. Uh, data from the SexNow survey in 2011, which is about 8,000 men across Canada, showed that one in two had not told a healthcare provider that they have male sex partners, which we call being out to your care provider. One in five were not satisfied with available healthcare services. And notably, one in 10 had dropped a provider because of anti-gay attitudes. So stigma within the healthcare system is an important factor that we need to be thinking about. Here in BC, the data from the, that same survey, SexNow, um, but this time just looking at BC data, looking at that one response to the question about being out to your care provider, um, looking at it by different regions around the province, and you can see a really striking gradient. So if you're in, even in the west end of Vancouver, there's like about 16% of men who haven't disclosed that they have sex with men. Um, but in other parts of the province, it gets down to like 60% of men have not disclosed that they have sex with men. So we can also see that there's a profound geographic uh, relationship to this. So, and, and what are the impacts of not being out to their care providers? So a study we did in Vancouver, the man count study in 2008-2009 of HIV negative men who have sex with men, uh, in, in with that study, 23% of men were not out to their care provider. Um, but you can see just looking at this graph with the orange bar being men who are out to their care provider and green bars being men who said that they weren't, you can see that the uptake of different sort of healthcare, regular good healthcare services like HIV testing, gunnery testing, syphilis, and, and vaccines for which um, gay and bisexual men are eligible um, hepatitis A and hepatitis B much lower, significantly lower in men who are not out to their care provider. So if we think about um, sort of the pathway of healthcare, um, and I apologize, and I'm thinking about this in a testing, um, and, and uh, we don't really use microscopes for HIV testing, but I was doing this on the airplane today, and that was all clip art <laughs> gave me, so <laughs> pretend, pretend that that's an HIV test. So if we're, if we're thinking about the pathway to an HIV test, right, uh, someone right now in BC has to access HIV testing through a healthcare provider, so it's mediated through a healthcare provider. Um, and that becomes challenging when there are these barriers to access, so if you have a provider who you're not comfortable talking to you're obviously it's affecting your access to healthcare. And while we while we definitely have to focus on the provider and we have to focus on the health system and try to change the health system, at the same time we have to try to figure out how are ways that men can access testing um, and sort of uh, circumvent a uh, provider. So this is where you know, there's a lot of thought around like where home self testing might come in into play in this regard. Um, but in BC we've uh, another option which is get checked online. So I'm not going to go through the details of get checked online. I'll just give a really high level overview. Feel free to check it out at any time. Um, right now, you have to create an account using a, a, a access code. So, by all means, go ahead. The access code is text, test Vancouver, um, and you know, tweet it, Facebook it, tell it to all your friends. Um, so then here's just at a really high level how it works. So it really boils down to a three-step process. So your first step is to, to get a requisition. So you, you go to the website, you create an account, you create your profile, um, you review some pretest information, you complete a, sort of a risk assessment, which asks you some of the same kinds of questions you get asked in a clinic. And then you print a requisition for STI testing. We know that printing is a barrier. We've known that right since the beginning, but the health system's not really set up for us to do it in other ways, but that's certainly something we want to try to get away with in the future, but that's kind of how it is now. Um, so then once you have your lab form, uh, you take it to a lab, so we've partnered with Life Labs, and you give your specimens. And right now the specimens are um, blood for HIV and syphilis and hepatitis C in some instances, and then uh, urines for um, chlamydia and gonorrhea. And we're working towards incorporation of uh, rectal swabs and throat swabs for chlamydia and gonorrhea. 
So then, uh, so once you've given your specimens, then you receive your test results. So if, if all of your results are negative, you get a notification to check your account and all your results are available online. If, uh, uh, if you have a, a problem with your sample, sometimes that happens, you'll get uh, a notice that you need to call the clinic to sort of arrange for new testing and repeat testing. For a positive result, um, there will be a notification. So you get the notification, go onto the website and it will say, we need, you know, call the clinic and it's a carefully worded message to try to reduce anxiety, although we know that's probably a factor. Um, at the same time, because it's a positive result, our clinical practice is usually to try to contact people as, as we can. So we'll use either the email address or, or phone number to connect with people if they've given us their phone number. So that's the, the general gist of Get Checked Online. So we did a bunch of, of in the, so this was five years in the making. And so as part of that, we did do a lot of sort of formative research to try to understand who would use it and why would people use it. And this was, uh, again, using that six now 2011 data, we added a question about um, would you use uh, uh, an internet-based testing service? We weren't calling it Get Checked Online at that time. Um, and just to point out that um, one of the factors in our multivariate analysis that was highly significant was that men who were not out to their care prov provider had much higher odds of intending to use Get Checked Online. So clearly there's a niche here, in, and there's, there's probably many different niches for Get Checked Online, and this is not the only reason why people would use Get Checked Online, but clearly it's an important reason. We also asked, uh, you know, what was your greatest perceived benefit of the internet testing service? Um, and again, not a big proportion, but 10% of men said that their biggest appeal was the fact they wouldn't have to see a doctor or nurse. So clearly again, uh, some relationship to sort of stigma in the healthcare system. And when we conducted focus groups with gay men, uh, SJ clinic clients, and healthcare providers, um, people had a lot of ideas about who would benefit from Get Checked Online, but in all of these groups, um, they identified people living in rural remote areas with limited access to testing, um, and youth or non-gay identified men who are not testing due to stigma was another common theme. So let me tell you about the implementation and what's happened with Get Checked Online. So it, it, um, we had a soft launch in September of 2014 where we were sending out uh, email invitations from people who'd been signing up over a year and a half in the clinic at BCCDC um, to be notified when the service was live. And then we started actively promoting it in January of this year. And so first we were promoting it in clinics and people could uh, sign up in clinics and be uh, sent an email invitation to uh, join the service. Then in March, we started uh, at a number of sites uh, handing out the code, uh, handing out a code for the service to people who were showing up but couldn't be seen in the clinic. So uh, one of the big problems is clinic capacity. And so there's a, usually a very high demand for testing services and drop-in services often mean that people get turned away and they can't be seen. So one option would be people were, were given the option of testing online. Um, we did a promotional campaign for uh, gay men in Vancouver, starting uh, sort of between April and, and sort of the tail end of it in August. Um, and, uh, and then, as I've mentioned, we're, we're hoping, I think in November, right, Devin? November is when we're adding our self-collected specimens. We're excited about that. But we have been planning for pilot expansion. So it's been interesting. I had this very, we had this very sort of idea that we'd have a very formal pilot. We would evaluate it, um, and then we'd decide what we'd do next. But because there's such a, a sort of intuitive appeal of the model, um, uh, many health authorities were interested in trying to pilot this as, or joining the pilot. So we've been planning for that regional expansion, um, even while we're sort of in this learning phase about, about how it works. Um, you may have seen uh, the promotional campaign that was, uh, had this concept of some things just make sense online, was trying to sort of um, make it a bit absurd, um, but, uh, but just pointing out the convenience that you can you get online HIV testing. So, um, so on this graph, uh, so this is sort of the over time, um, what things look like. So, did you see that? Oh, no arrow, okay. Um, it's all right, I'll, I'll explain. So if, if you look at just a, the biggest peak there, you can see there's the first bar is green, and the green are people who created accounts during a certain time period, or a two-week period. Um, the next bar right next to it are re uh, people who have um, created requisitions. So you create an account, and then you create a requisition. Um, the next bar are people who've completed testing, um, and then the very small red dots at the bottom are positive results. So you can see there's, a, there's always this consistent drop-off of like people who created accounts, um, then they've completed a requisition, and then they've tested. Um, but there, there are some very interesting time trends in relation to the things that we were doing. So um, this is when we started doing the in-clinic promotion, and so it was kind of sort of grumbling along. Um, this is when we started adding the turnaway codes, um, and this is when we did the promotional campaign for Men Have Sex With Men. So you can kind of see how that correlates to the pattern. The other key thing is that the, the dotted red is a moving average just showing um, 
how many people <laughs> completed testing if they created a requisition. Um, and so it's interesting to see that uh, with the promotional campaign and the turnaway codes, we had a much greater proportion of people who actually were motivated to complete the testing process. Um, and that speaks to the motivation for testing, which we think is a really important factor. But just in summary, so since we started in September 2014, there have been 747 accounts, um, 564 people have created lab forms, 280 people have tested, um, and we have uh, four positive in this time period, but we just had a fifth positive. So we've got, that's kind of our positivity rate. Um, and the positives have been uh, uh, primarily chlamydia and gonorrhea. So we haven't had an HIV yet. So to focus then in on what we know about monosex with men, um, we, we can, we're, we're, this is just very preliminary. At the end of this year, we'll do a really full, full detailed analysis so we can look at this in more detail. But if we look at um, what we know, we, we, can, we can identify monosex with men once they've created a test requisition because it's a combination of some information in the demographics and what they do when they create a requisition that allows us to identify gay, bisexual, or other monosex with men. So if we look at the people who created a test requisitions, um, in terms of the sign up in the clinic, the access code, for turnaways and through the Just Make Sense campaign, not surprisingly, the greatest proportion of, of GBMSM was uh, uh, through the Just Make Sense campaign, which was targeting gay men. Um, overall, 44% uh, of people who created test requisitions are known to be uh, MSM. So who are these um, men on sex with men? So we know the average age is about 36 years, but quite a range between 16 years to 70 years. So uh, you know, I think we, it, so we all had assumptions about who would be accessing, and we didn't think 70-year-olds were in our, in our demographic. But um, it's nice to know that's, that's an option for many men. Um, looking at it by residence, so all of the specimen collection sites are based in Vancouver. So certainly, like, but only like 62%, which is obviously a pretty large percentage, um, are from Vancouver who've used it. But you can see that there's quite a lot of geographic variabilities um, with even like, um, like almost 10% being like higher up in the Fraser Valley or in other parts of BC. So clearly there's an incentive for people uh, to be coming and using it. Looking at the breakdown by ethnicity um, as sort of Typically, we see in sort of samples of, of whether they're research or testing, um, predominantly white, and then for Vancouver, 15% Chinese and 4% First Nations Inuit, um, Métis, and sort of a scattering of, of other ethnicities. We conducted a very small uh, sort of a quick and dirty survey at Pride this past year just to get a sense of, of uh, what's sort of the lay of the land around the campaign. Um, so it's small, it was only 114 men, but we found that um, surprisingly, we weren't actually expecting the awareness of Get Checked Online to be so high, but about one in four in the sample were, um, were aware of Get Checked Online. Um, we were doing this survey through the HIM clinic, and so there might have been a bias in terms of who was coming to the, or the HIM booth, but we, you know, it was trying to just get people going by. Um, but, and again, 3% had actually used Get Checked Online, which is something we weren't expecting given sort of the numbers, which are, it's not been a huge volume of tests. Um, uh, about one in four recognized the campaign images, so that's a bit on the low side. We were hoping for a sort of a, a greater recognition of the campaign. Um, and about 50% found it appealing or very appealing. But, uh, but again, f about 50% were likely or very likely to use Get Checked Online in the future once they sort of learned about it. Um, and again, a small proportion were unlikely or very unlikely. And this, this is sort of in the range of, it's a little bit lower than what we found in sex now, but, but again, it sort of seems that when people are aware that there is a motivation or intention to use, and um, so from some varying messages of the campaign, luckily our sort of like red herring, the used condoms didn't really, people didn't think that was a main message, so that worked really well. Um, but uh, uh, you know, it's always very complicated to sort of try to communicate these things. So, so what are our conclusions so far? So, um, so it seems, I think, what we've really learned, like we've done some preliminary quick surveys of people who've created, like who have accounts and created um, requisitions and and it seems clear that it's not as though people had didn't have got that far and decided to stop because they didn't like it it's usually because people are not motivated to test so they'll like check it out create an account um, create a lab requisition but they're not actually really motivated to test they're just checking it out but um, but when we did surveys of people who who got to that point many people said that they intended to use it in the future so it's really about reaching people who are motivated to test at that time um, so for example that's probably why the turnaways are really important because people are motivated to test and so then when they're given an option they will test um, part of what we're thinking, and in speaking with sort of community partners, um, is that we think at the moment we may be reaching uh, gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men um, who are already connected to some very valued STI clinical services in Vancouver. So people sort of anecdotally would say, well, well why do I go wait you know, in Life Labs? I'll just come back to you know, the HIM clinic where I get really good care. Um, and certainly uh, when we started um, uh, developing Get Checked Online, which is now like five or six years ago. It was a very different setting at that time, and now with Stop HIV and, and a lot of efforts around testing, there's quite good access in Vancouver. 
Um, so, so we had designed the campaign and our initial thought was that the convenience was going to be a big draw, the fact that it's just really convenient, you can go during your time, but I think because of that, it's actually not really a relative advantage of Get Checked Online um, in terms of convenience. Um, but, but encouraging once people are aware of Get Checked Online, there's sort of a high reported intention to use. Um, uh, we know that people who are completing testing through Get Checked Online intend to use it again. Um, and, and we, I guess, uh, just to, to confess, I mean, we all expected and we were really bracing for like a huge uptake because this is every time I've talked to about this, and we've all talked about this to like for years to many people, everyone's like, oh, it's so great, I'm going to use it, I'm going to use it. Um, and there was an experience in San Francisco of a similar program where they just made it publicly accessible and promoted it to the public and it was so popular they had to shut it down. So, so we, were, we were actually quite guarded in our approach. So that's kind of why you have to have a code and it's kind of like linked through a campaign. Um, so I think we were very cautious and in part that's also about making sure that we maintain good relationships with the provincial lab who are doing all of the testing and, and so I think that's been a bit, um, I think one of the factors related to sort of our low uptake so far. But, um, but I think, but at least it's, uh, I think uh, it's, we've done really well so far. So what's up next? So as mentioned, adding the rectal and throat swabs, sort of longer term we're hoping to move towards electronic ordering so like you get it on your phone and you don't have to print it, um, but that's, that's not in the immediate future because that requires a lot of system change. Um, but there is now discussion underway and there's active planning for extension of Get Checked Online to other sites in BC. So currently there's planning underway in three health authorities, Vancouver Island, Interior and Fraser Health, um, with the first sites coming on board in 2016. These are going to be two to three sites per health authority um, with a mixture of sort of urban, suburban and rural sites. So we're quite excited about that because it will give us a chance to really test the hypothesis that that this is going to be um, really important in rural areas where there's less access to testing. Um, all regions have identified gay, bisexual and other men sex with men as a party population for the service. Um, so that's good. We'll actually be able to sort of then compare really across the province how this works. And then I think we, I mean, you always have to continue to promote and it's always a challenge when you have limited budgets, but um, so continued promotion is, is important. And we're thinking that it's, because our, our emphasis so far has just been on emphasizing convenience and raising awareness of the service, that we'll probably shift our tactics to be focusing more on emphasizing the privacy-related aspects to try to come, you know, address some of these stigma or healthcare access concerns, and really shifting the focus to really targeting men who are motivated to get testing. And finally, um, I think uh, because this is sort of a novel program, we sort of have a, a commitment to sort of ongoing uh, research and evaluation, and that's going to be really important as we expand as well so that we can really understand how it works. So I'd certainly like to close that uh, Get Checked Online has been a huge team effort from all kinds of partners, both in the community and um, within BCCGC in the labs and elsewhere, and um, it couldn't be done without all these people. And I will stop there. <laughs>